So my name is Michael Hiskey. I am the Vice President of Marketing and Business Development at Cognitio. You can see my picture there. I'm joined by uh, my much smarter and more accomplished keynote presenters, Dr. Sharon Kirkham and Dr. Trevor Dobbin from our labs back in the UK. I'm going to cover just a brief overview of Cognitio and the Cognitio in-memory analytical platform uh, and then talk a little bit about uh, how we've partnered with MicroStrategy and, and partners and so forth at the end. In the meantime, in the middle, you're going to get the good content from Trevor and Sharon who will talk uh, more about iCubes, juxtaposing Cognitio as an in-memory layer under that environment, and of course a demonstration. So let's press on. So this next slide here gives you a broad overview of Cognitio and some of the clients we've been working with for many, many years. Cognitio is focused on providing the premier high-performance in-memory analytical layer that runs above how you persist the data and below the BI tools like MicroStrategy. And we've been in business for over 25 years doing that. Yeah, of course, in that period of time, the price of in-memory and some of these more innovative approaches to analytics have certainly come down. So it's exciting to be at the forefront of that, having really innovated and pioneered the space. Uh, as, I admit, as I referenced, the labs for Cognitio are in the UK, as you'll tell from the charming accents of my co-presenters. I'm in New York City, which you'll probably be able to tell by the background noise here and there uh, from 38th Street. Um, just sort of a quick overview, and we're not going to go into a lot of detail, talking about some of the high-level clients on, our, on the right side of the screen there. Um, from all walks of areas of the businesses, uh, media analytics, retail analytics, we've done some very interesting work in customer loyalty. Uh, so you've probably used some Cognitio technology when you've checked out of a store or a, a a, a mart in some ways, uh, and also TiVo. So just had a meeting yesterday with uh, TiVo Research and Analytics who's been our client for a number of years. They have a tremendous in-memory appliance that does really interesting, not just rating us analysis, but also blending the online and offline media metrics of how clients use the products and brands that, that TiVo uh, is marketing. So without any further ado, on the next slide, I'm going to talk about how Cognitio is an analytical accelerator for MicroStrategy. So Cognitio gives you the ability to engage big data and enable Hadoop without changing your underlying data structure. And now why would you want to do that? There's three main reasons why clients come to us uh, to work alongside MicroStrategy and underneath the MicroStrategy environment to make that environment run faster, better, cheaper, so to speak. The first thing is getting a comprehensive view of the data. Increasingly, as you get into a big data environment, you need to have more and more data sources and more and more data uh, uh, pieces, and the velocity of that data is coming much more quickly. Increasingly, organizations are using different tools to do that. They're employing other data discovery tools when they really don't have to. Using a Cognitio environment underneath MicroStrategy, you're granted the flexibility to give those departmental solutions to, uh, a boost, and they could use MicroStrategy to do so. You could also control and govern the data that those environments are able to use while still keeping it in its source system wherever it's most comfortably, securely, and efficiently stored. The next, of course, is flexibility. So again, that flexibility to give MicroStrategy to various environments is important, but also the flexibility to add data sources, to take them away, to control the window of what data is seen. And then finally, Cognitio can be thought of as a universal sort of middle layer so that I could write business applications from MicroStrategy or my other BI tools in standard SQL relational format. And then Cognitio negotiates where that data sits. So this is a very complementary strategy if you've built an enterprise data warehouse or you have several data warehouse sources alongside of Hadoop or thinking about employing Hadoop. Cognitio is that middle layer. And, and on the next slide, we're going to make that very clear. So uh, my colleague Trevor Doblin will take over in just a second. But suffice to say that Cognitio is that gold layer that runs in between the persistence layer that we have here and the microstrategy environment that you know and love. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Trevor Dobbin. Okay, thank you, Michael. Um, so um, as Michael said, um, just before we go into the demo, uh, let's have a, a quick look at um, where Cognitio sits in a little bit more detail. So uh, on the slide at the minute, you can see a 
very traditional scenario um, where enterprises are, are capturing and storing lots of data. So that data will be stored perhaps in an enterprise data warehouse, uh, maybe in some Hadoop clusters, uh, maybe even in some departmental solutions or other repositories. And the chances are that there's some kind of some level of reporting carried out at this level. On top of this persistence layer, there are normally a number of BI tools, as Michael indicated, uh, including, of course, MicroStrategy. Uh, there are maybe other, some other OLAP specialized client tools, and I'll bet there are lots of Microsoft Excel users messing around as well. And the problem then is, of course, that we have all of these different pieces battling for airtime and continually hammering the, the persistence layer. So the position of the uh, Cognitio Analytical Appliance means that we add a golden layer to this overall picture, and this offers us two very, very important benefits. Firstly, incredible query and analytics performance, uh, and secondly, the ability to enjoy this performance over huge volumes of data. Now, the reason for these two benefits are really very simple. Uh, and in fact, you can see them marked on the slide if you, if you look very carefully. Uh, the way to get the best performance for your analytics is simply by making the CPUs you have available work as hard as possible. Uh, now, one of Cognitio's key features is that it is a true MPP technology, so everything which takes place is completely parallelized. Uh, and furthermore, the way to make those CPUs work flat out is to make sure that your data is as close to them as possible. So we eliminate disk I.O. by holding the data in memory. So it's that key combination of in-memory and MPP that gives us tremendous query performance, sometimes tens or even hundreds of times faster than before. Uh, OK, we're going to go into the demonstration in a, in, in a couple of minutes. Before we go into the demo, I'd just like to quickly set the context for, uh, for what you're going to be seeing. Uh, now, a standard MicroStrategy installation includes, uh, by default, five analytics modules. And each of these modules consists of a, a little sample Microsoft Excel database, a set of reports and documents or dashboards, and a PDF which describes the data model and those reports. And it's one of those uh, analytics modules that we've made use of for our demo today. And the one we're going to look at is called the Sales and Distribution Analysis Module. And it contains two fact tables and 26 dimension tables. Uh, there are 77 reports which are provided. They're split into five different sections. And there are six documents or dashboards. And all we have done for our demo is we've taken this standard MicroStrategy module, and we've built a much larger Cognitio version. So the standard Microsoft Access version, uh, which we'll see in a second, has about um, 970,000 transactions in the two fact tables. So it's got a bit less than a million rows. Now, uh, and the Access database is sitting on the same server as, uh, our, as our MicroStrategy. So for the Cognitio version, we've simply taken the fact data in the Access database, and we've loaded it a 1,000 times. So our Cognitio database contains almost 1 billion rows of data. Uh, it's, a, it's a small Cognitio cluster in the cloud, uh, but it's, it's clearly not. It's got a 1,000 times as much data as the Access version, but it's clearly not got a, a hardware infrastructure, which is a 1,000 times greater. So at this point, I'm just going to switch straight over to the live demo. Okay, so as I just indicated, you can see here on the top half of our screen, these little uh, folders and reports are the, the Cognitio uh, database or the, the um, Cognitio demo. And the bottom half of the screen here, you can see the same folders, uh, but they're the, the Microsoft Access equivalents. So let's just kick off one of the reports. I'm going to choose the quotation analysis folder. Uh, let's choose it on the Cognitio side of things and on the, uh, the Access side of things. We've got a little bit of communication from here we go. Uh, I just lost connection to the MicroStrategy server, so I shall just log in again. 
good proof that this is live. There we go. So on the Cognitio uh, demo, let's go into the quotation analysis folder. Let's go into the same folder on our little access version. And the report that I'm going to run is this one here, the rejected quotation items report. So I shall run it on both our sections of the screen. So we've got some filters which are, we need to choose to, to run the report. I'm just going to choose, let's choose sales organization, sales office, sales group. I'm going to choose the same options in our access version. And we'll kick off the Cognitio one, kick off the access one. And they both send a piece of, a piece of SQL to their respective databases. And you can see they're both back in, what was that, about a second, I think. So let's just scroll down and have a quick look at the results. So we can see here, on the, if we look at the bottom half of the screen first, let's see, we can see in San Francisco for the sales group Wholesale Market West, we've got 9,000 quotation items. We've got 3,000 rejected items. And we've got a, a, a value for those rejected, um, the net amount of $315 million. We have a quick look at the top half of our screen at the Cognitio demo for the same sales office in San Francisco, the same sales group. You can see we've got 9 million quotation items, 3 million rejected items, and a net amount of $315 billion. So you can easily see that we've got exactly 1,000 times as much data uh, in our Cognitio system than we have in the, in the access system. So what's happening here is that the Cognitio system is, is cr crunching through 1,000 times as much data to carry out all of the necessary counts, aggregations, on-the-fly sums and groupings, and all the good stuff that, that typically goes on um, whenever you send a piece of SQL to the database. So let's just run a, a second little report. Um, let's move back to the main menu. Uh, for the second report, I'm going to go into the sales order analysis folder. And I'm going to go into customer sales analysis. And we're going to run the top report here. So the customer loyalty orders in two consecutive quarters report. So I'll kick off the Cognitio one, kick off the Access one. Now the default here is um, in the selection is the year 2010, so that's fine. I'll just leave that in both the examples. Run the Cognitio one, run the Access one. Uh, now, in this case, the, um, the cognition report will, will finish in a few seconds, but the, uh, the access one we're going to see will, uh, will run for some time. So you can see we've got our results back already for cognition, but access is struggling, doesn't know what to do. So at this point, I'm going to just hand over to my colleague, Dr. Sharon Kirkham, who will, uh, will explain in a lot more detail what's happening, why um, cognition has been able to present those results so quickly, and why access is still grinding away. Thanks, Trevor. Good afternoon, good morning everyone, thanks for joining. Um, so while the access is just um, coming back with the results, um, I want to go into a little bit of detail about why Cognitio outperforms other platforms as complexity increases. So this is a more complex report than the one Trevor showed you first off. Um, so, and also remember that the Cognitio system is running on that thousand times more data, so on those billion rows. Um, so there's a number of things. Firstly, Cognitio is in memory. So there's much faster access to the data for the CPUs, as Trevor's mentioned, than any platform that's disk-based. Um, the thing to remember about an in-memory platform is it's not simply the same as a cache, um, which is generally controlled by demand of, um, of, of reports in the case of MicroStrategy. In memory, an in-memory platform means that the, um, the platform itself, its optimizer, everything that's handling all that analytical workload knows, knows exactly where the data is in memory so that it can access it and push it to the CPUs um, very much more uh, expediently. Also, the MPP, so when that data is in memory, we're utilizing all the cores to, um, to get the fast access um, from the data. Um, on the system to crunch through all those numbers. 
Um, finally, um, it's worth mentioning that um, Cognitio is a mature product and it's been designed from the off for a mixed analytical workload. So it's ideally suited for the type of SQL um, uh, that is um, coming out of the back of um, a micro strategy environment. So we can see that the access report is back now. And in the same way that um, we, we saw with um, Trevor's report, we can see that all the numbers in the Cognitio version are a thousand times bigger. There's three more zeros in, in, this, in, in the Cognitio report than there is in the, um, in the access report. So um, as I was saying, um, we're ideally suited for micro strategy. Uh, multiplat SQL, lots of joins, lots of complex SQL, um, and I'm sure all of you that are uh, administering micro strategy environments have to um, think a lot about optimizing reports and maybe tuning things in the background, um, sometimes even having to go to freeform SQL reports to solve problems, and this is not the, not the requirement on something like a Cognitio platform which will handle that complex SQL easily. So let me just switch back to slides. Just maximize that. I'm going to use that later. OK. So I just want to talk a little bit more now about um, uh, why Cognitio um, will accelerate BI performance, uh, but particularly with MicroStrategy. So um, MicroStrategy, as we all know, has a vast and rich set of functionality available to it. And typically, there are many ways to impl implement end user requirements. So if there's a specific reporting need, there's many ways that we can go about um, satisfying that need. Um, However, these options are often restricted by the performance and the flexibility of the platform that's supporting the microstrategy environment. And also, we have to also think about delivery in a timely manner. So can we get these reports out in the time frame that's required, be it whether they're on-demand reports or batch processes? We have to think about how long it takes these things to run, right? So. As well as having to manage all that, we also have users that are today perhaps were once happy with um, a standard report are being more demanding about the information that's available to them. So for example, if a user wants to be able to specify their own groups for analysis, then there's a number of ways that you could perhaps do this in MicroStrategy. We could look at custom groups with prompted filters so that the people can the end user can pick and choose who comes up in what custom group. Or we could do something like a report based on the report where we filter out, um, we filter a subset of accounts, say, and then report off of those. But both of these produce much more complex multipath SQL um, out of the back end of MicroStrategy. And what you need in those situations is a platform that can provide the performance to support your requirements, such as Cognitio. So we've got more complex reporting demands. We've also got the situation where things like dashboards and documents are being produced where effectively there's multiple reports for, um, supporting one particular dashboard. And so the complexity of those are increasing and there are more of them supporting, um, supporting the end user. So in that respect, again, we need a platform that can perform these kinds of tasks and that platform is obviously Cognitio. So as well as in increased complexity, um, users that are often successful, say at a department level, might have some great insight that they're telling other people about in their organization. And this may well be spread across the whole of the organization. So something that was running in one department might suddenly be um, asked of, of you in terms of every single department within the organization or even over larger subsets of the data. So we're talking about the data volumes that the reports are needing to, um, to utilize, to access, to be satisfied are increasing all the time. So remember that 
as Trevor's shown in his, in his demo, that Cognitio runs analytics easily over big data. And it's that in-memory um, part of the platform that gives you the flexibility to be able to support these more complex reports over larger sets of data. So as well as the more complex information over larger data sets, end users are also becoming more demanding about actually controlling their own reporting. Their microstrategy has many ways to support this. Um, so for example, we've got things like object prompts. So um, a end user can actually pick which, um, uh, which attributes, et cetera, actually appear in the report that they want. So this, all, all this flexibility is fantastic for the end user, um, but it has to be supported by the platform. Also, there's features like Drill Anywhere, and if you enable that, you're allowing the end unit user to chase down the insight that they require to answer their business needs, but then you've got to open up effectively the whole of the data set available to the end user, and you have to be flexible and agile about how you access and um, analyze that data. So from a microstrategy point of view, this has a number of consequences. The main one being that, um, as I'm sure you're all aware, microstrategy caches reports. Um, it's a very sensible thing to do. Um, but if you've got all this flexibility in the reporting capability for the end user, it's actually very unlikely that the cache that's currently held for a particular report will hold all the information that is required um, for the next iteration of that report by a different user. So uh, effectively, the cache becomes useless. So MicroStrategy, thinking about this a few years ago, actually brought in um, a technology called Intelligent Cubes, which um, goes part of the way to address some of these reporting performance issues. Um, and it's a it's a it's a it's a good in layer for those a good layer for those of you who are not familiar with intelligent cubes. What they effectively are are cached reports that uh, large sized cached reports um, that are that are that are held in um, uh, in the memory on the MicroStrategy server, and they typically contain a number of aggregated measures across a series of attributes. So that they. They calculate the, um, the aggregation at, the, at the, the level of the data in the report, and then that, that intelligent cube is cached and used to, um, to provide reporting um, and data effectively for a number of separate reports that are built off of the cube. And they've also brought in dynamic sourcing, which allows you to build reports that check whether there's an intelligent cube that can um, satisfy the report. If so, it will use that um, intelligent cube. If not, it will go back to the platform. So in this um, flexible environment, it's good to have a platform that performs so that you can, um, if you're not satisfying your reports with your intelligent cube, you can go back to a platform that produces results in a timely manner. Now, intelligent cubes typically have two areas where we can um, we can experience problems. The first of these is um, time constraints. So, intelligent cubes are typically published, say, on a daily basis in a batch window. So, you've done all your data load into your um, into your underlying platform, and all your data is sitting there. And then you will run your, your your batch window will run. It will produce your intelligent cubes so that they can then support your reporting for what is probably the, the, the rest of the working day. So as your users embrace the use of the intelligent cubes, then the number and size of the cubes can grow. And they can't necessarily then be created as quickly within that time frame, within that batch window. So one of the things that having a Cognitio platform is that layer in between your persistence layer and your BI infrastructure will enable you to do is to um, actually build your cubes faster, thus creating shorter batch windows. I'm going to show you a demo in a minute, and we can have a look at this. 
Um, and also, with these shorter batch windows, this means that you've got more time to address any issues that occur or possibly the option to do your refreshes um, in a more expedient manner, not necessarily daily, but at strategic times throughout the day. The other side um, of um, issues with intelligent cubes is typically space constraints. So you probably started off with intelligent cubes at a high level uh, reporting, so perhaps at the department monthly level, for example, and um, the performance is great, so everyone um, loves them, and the end users start demanding more info. They want more attributes in there. They want to be able to look at this data by various different um, hierarchies that you have in your microstrategy environment, and they want to look at more measures. They want to not just look at spends and debits and credits, but a whole slew of measures. So this effectively means that the cubes grow, and they grow very quickly. As soon as you add one dimension, you're massively increasing the size of your cube. So your cubes effectively grow too large to be comfortably held within the cache of the MicroStrategy server. But with Cognitio supporting MicroStrategy, um, one way to handle this is to keep the cubes at a workable higher level of aggregation where they sit comfortably in the cache and they can furnish the reports of those users who are just looking at things on a top level, but enable drill anywhere, which then allows your users to go where they like, but when they go beyond the cube, then they can use, utilize the um, performance power of Cognitio to handle those deeper dives into the detail and to get that end insight. So with those things in mind, I'm actually going to um, do a little demo of some intelligent cubes now. So um, I'll just go back to the micro strategy environment. Um, I'm going to use a, um, a different um, project. Once I can remind myself how to spell administrator, we can get in. Okay, so um, I'm going to just go through to that. Now, I'm going to actually run the Intelligent Cube itself from desktop because, oh, because it gives you a little bit more information about, um, about um, what we're actually doing. So first thing I'm going to do is just is go into the intelligent cube cache and just remove the intelligent cube so that we're going to rebuild this now. So I'll just get rid of that out of the cache so that we can go and re rebuild it. Okay. So while this is set, while I run this, okay, I'll just nip back to the presentation and just explain what we're doing. So within the intelligent cube that we're building, okay, so this is a data set which is actually credit card transactions and it's individual credit card transaction level. So for every single time someone used their card in a chip and pin machine, um, it creates a record. So we've got 1.6 billion individual credit card transactions over 10 years. Okay, and what we're going to do with those 1.6 billion rows of, data, rows of transaction data is uh, we're going to build a cube over all of it, um, and we're going to um, produce that at levels um, that um, are defined within our micro strategy hierarchies. So we've got a number of different hierarchies available in this data, but we're going to look at three. We're going to look at geography, and we're going to create the cube at the top level of the geography um, hierarchy, which is region, which is circled in red. We've obviously got a time hierarchy, so we're going to build at the month level. So the report will have, uh, the, sorry, the intelligent cube will have year and month in it. We've also got some demographic group information. And we're actually going to build that at the description level, which is the second level down in our demographics hierarchy. 
So we've got geographical region, we've got month, and we've got demographic description as our lowest level of our data. So we're going to build that cube and we're going to produce measures on a transaction count, so the number of transactions that took place in each of those um, um, each of those dimensions, um, a spend and a credit. So we've got people spending and we've got people making payments off of their card. So if I just switch back to the cube. So we can see that the cube's actually now been published um, and the execution time was 39 seconds. So I just want to swap to the SQL view so we can just have a look at that in a bit more detail. Okay, so we can see here, here's the total time in the query engine. Actually, this, the time it took for the, um, for the, for the Cognitio platform, so here's the Cognitio environment here, to, um, to um, take those 1.6 billion rows of data and aggregate them across those dimensions, uh, attributes, if you like, um, is just shy of 14 seconds, and then um, it took just over 22 seconds for us to pass that data across um, the network onto the machine where the micro strategies being stored. So um, if I just switch back to get the right one, no, that one. If I just switch back now and run this report, which hangs off of that intelligent cube. Okay, so um, we're going to look at content family units and we're going to look at um, 2010 and 2011 data and I just run that report. So I should say that having lots and lots of filters like the ones that you've just seen is one of the reasons why, um, you know, the idea of an intelligent cube is worthwhile because different people could choose different selections in those. So we can see that it came back very, very quickly. Um, and we can see here that that is furnished by the intelligent cube that we've just built. So I should have said when we built that cube in 40 seconds, that proves out the fact that um, having Cognitio behind, uh, supporting the micro strategy environment means that your cube builds are very, very quick. So that's the time constraint issue. And remember that that cube was built over 1.6 billion rows of data. Okay. So here we have our 2010 and 2011 and our demographic descriptions. And I'm going to have a look at the southeast. And we can go in and we can see that this is coming back very quickly as we're just touching the queue. I'm going to drill into 2011. And there we can see each month. Now, things start to get a bit more interesting um, with the when you start drilling outside of the queue when you want to go to the underlying platform. This is normally where the performance starts to falter. But what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to go down to individual days in January. So now we're actually having to go back to the platform, go back to the underlying structure to furnish that report. And we can see here we are. Here's our daily data for our different demographic descriptions. If I just pop back to the report details page, we can now see that this is um, table names inside of here, and this is actually within the that was actually passed into the Cognitio environment, and we can see that the report itself just took a few seconds um, to run. And so what this is showing is. Um, the ability to um, be more um, conservative about how you use your cubes. Use your cubes, your intelligent cubes at a higher level to furnish the top level reporting. But as soon as you want to start diving deeper into the details of the data, then um, if you've got a platform like um, Cognitio supporting your micro strategy environment, then the, you're still going to get that blisteringly fast performance of just a few seconds. I could go anywhere in this data and, um, and see a similar um, performance in terms of getting those results back um, almost as quickly as I would get them um, in, in, uh, from the Intelligent Cube. Finally, what I would like to show you before I hand back to Michael is um, just a few recent performance improvements that we've seen in some um, projects that we've run here. So this is real data and real um, 
life situations out there that people have engaged us with. Um, but obviously, the actual timings are proprietary, so um, these results are presented um, in relative terms. So the way to think about this, if we take the left-hand graph, which was a project where we introduced Cognitio as a layer between Teradata and MicroStrategy, um, if you consider that the median speed, so the, the larger the bar, the better, so that's the faster the queries are or the reports are running, um, if we think about um, Cognitio's um, median performance being a speed of one, represented here, then um, we can see that the median Teradata performance was down at 0.2, which meaning for an average query, or an average report, sorry, um, um, a Cognitio, um, a Teradata system with Cognitio is coming back five times faster. And indeed, some of the, um, some of the, um, reports were coming back um, almost 10 times faster, represented by this green here. On the, on the right hand side, we've got a similar um, situation with SQL Server. Um, notice that the, um, the um, axis um, is on a different scale than previously. So here a Cognitio relative performance of 1, and the um, SQL Server is down at around um, 0.25. So we're looking at four or five times faster, and there were particular performance reports that were significantly faster, up to 30, 35 times faster um, in those situations. So I'll hand back to Michael and say thanks very much for listening. I look forward to answering anyone's questions. Thank you so much, Sharon. So uh, right now you should be looking at the uh, cooking show as a golden layer slide, number 20, and this is a great example of, of exactly what Sharon said. So first of all, if you're still listening to me, and I'm, there's lots of you still on, you're either inspired or incredulous. I hope it's more the former, but the Q&A session will take care of the latter. What we're encouraging you to do is go further. So you can unleash MicroStrategy to go beyond what you could do in iCubes and what you could do with your standard sets of data to do real drill anywhere analysis. And hopefully what you've seen is a number of the clients that Sharon works with day to day, and I wish I could have some of those clients on the call as well, but everybody has, uh, they're protecting their own intellectual property, of course. Uh, so the, Sharon, the clients that Sharon gets to work with every day are seeing these real performance improvements from using Cognitio in their environment. And a lot of them were those that had to shut off some of the cool drill anywhere type of functionality that comes standard in MicroStrategy because they didn't have the underlying aggregates built to do so. So we're encouraging you to be able to do more of those kinds of things. I'm just going to finish up a couple of quick points here, and then we're going to get right into questions and answers. I see questions have been coming up during the course of the call, and that's great. We'll answer all of those in a moment. But one question I did want to answer that came in was about underlying data systems. So in the example Sharon just showed you with the client she was working with, they happened to use Teradata. Uh, as you can see in this diagram, I would point out that the persistence of the data, generally if you have multiple, multiple terabytes or petabytes of data, often sits in either an enterprise data warehouse or a Hadoop cluster or some sort of combination of those things. In fact, many of the clients we speak with want to be able to dynamically orchestrate and provision between Hadoop and an enterprise data warehouse. So Cognitio offers them that ability because it provides a buffer between MicroStrategy and that persistence layer of data. So you know the data could be in DB2 or Oracle or Hadoop or, or in, some of the data can be in all of those places and it's pinned into memory and Cognitio so that you could uh, be able to have access to it. Can I add to that, uh, Michael? Please do. Thanks. Um, so one of the things that you can take advantage of um, if you have your, regardless of um, where your um, data is, is persistent, represented by the pink block. Um, one of the things that you can do is um, get the data into the um, Cognitio platform as quickly as possible and perform any transformations that you need um, in order to furnish your BI reporting environment within the um, in-memory platform. Because we've got all those CPUs sitting there with the, in -mem the data pinned in memory with the great 
fast access to the CPUs, it makes sense to be able to do those transformations there and actually utilize all that power that you have available to you. And then you have your data in a transformed state ready to um, furnish um, the uh, BI platform. So whenever I um, talk in depth about this, I always try to talk about the flexibility of the whole system. By putting that middle layer in, you're um, creating for yourself an extremely flexible system about which data you choose to hold in memory and support your BI um, infrastructure that you have um, that's um, accessing the system. Thank you. Fair enough. On the next slide, um, slide 21, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, country's partnership with MicroStrategy and some partners and services that um, that exist today. And we're wrapping up quickly, so we're going to get to questions on the slide after this. So Cognitive Show is a certified and supportive, a supported partner for MicroStrategy BI. We have been for over 10 years, which means we have some rapid POC environments available. We have a number of clients, some examples and reference clients are, are listed there. They're doing interesting projects that leverage Cognitio underlying MicroStrategy with a range of other uh, data providers and sources involved. There's also a number of partners that we've worked with in the past and continue to work with in the future um, that do fast sort of quick strike type engagements to enable you to use MicroStrategy in new and exciting ways. So certainly uh, MicroStrategy is years ahead of any other BI platform in terms of mobile. So there are a number of clients that have done direct to mobile type applications and you could do a fast uh, services engagement with one of these partners where you could get in a six or eight week period from nothing to a completely fully developed fast mobile dashboard that could be delivered to your executives. You could deliver Cognitio and MicroStrategy either in the cloud or on premises. It's, it runs on a simple x86 environment. There's a bunch more information on the website referenced via, below the Cognitio.com slash BI Accelerator. And of course, you can also communicate with any of these partners to find out more information. The next slide is slide 22. Uh, you can get started with Cognitio for free. So Cognitio is available either from the Amazon Web Marketplace or by download from the Informatica Marketplace for the on-premises version for free. For instances that could be on an unlimited amount of data, your only restriction is the amount of memory you can use in the system. Obviously the secret sauce of Cognitio is how it effectively uses memory and does in-memory processing for all of the analytics. And when we say in-memory, this doesn't mean it's a fat cache. So to the, clarify the point with iCubes, we're not talking about caching. We're actually talking about doing all the analysis of the data in memory, which is an amazing supplement to the MicroStrategy environment. So a lot more detail there. You can see more on Cognitio.com slash free. And then finally, as we get on to the questions and answers, I want to thank you all for your time and energy and support. Uh, please do take the time to follow us on Twitter. Lots of interesting things we're saying there. Um, Facebook, there's a blog, there's lots of um, tidbits that we tend to try and roll out day by day that most of our, um, our clients give us and we share with them and, and it's a great community of information. So please do that. My contact information is on the right hand side as are my colleagues. I'd like to thank you all and I'd like to thank my learned colleagues Dr. Trevor Dobbin and Dr. Sharon Kirkham for spending their time with all of us today.